Within a year of appearing on Opportunity Knox, Lena became a regular face on television. The whole island was very, very proud of her. I mean, every time you turned on the television, you would see Lena. She guested on the Bachelor's television series for BBC. She guested on shows like Morgan and Wise. And things like that. I mean, she couldn't, for instance, work as a, a, an adult professional artist and do summer season and pantomime and so on until she was older. <laughs> children in this country have to work under the Children and Young Persons Act. And until they are 14, they can only do 39 dates a year. Did you know that? 39 dates out of the whole year. And then until they're 16, um, after 14 and up to 16, they can do, I think it was 80. Uh, you know, so there wasn't the great opportunity when she had her hit uh, for her to uh, appear um, a lot and to make a lot of money. There just wasn't the opportunity to do it, unfortunately. The Solomons had a hectic lifestyle. Her cousin Martha and husband David were occasionally asked to take care of Lena while the Solomons were away. And when she came here with us for those weekends, I mean, she would stand on that little fireplace in that room there and do little shows for us. Didn't stop. She'd put little hats. Just she was a fantastic mimic. She could mimic beautifully, which you rarely saw on the TV. She used to come across with a little girl axe, you know, like that and all that. But she was a wonderful mimic. She would mimic all the well-known singers and actors around and do everybody put little shows on for us. She was delightful, she really was. You know, we used to sit here and, and have fun. We had a little dog at the time, she used to play with her little doggy, and, and it was a perfectly lovely little kid, you know. Did everything, ate everything, enjoyed everything. Although Lena seemed happy, the press were quick to notice that she was losing weight. She said something to us once, Dorothy, about, oh, what did she say, Mark? Oh, about uh, being a little bit uh, overweight, but, you know, being on the island with fish and chips and tin beans and spaghetti, etc., uh, Dorothy put her on a sort of, uh, I would say, a healthier diet. Well, obviously, she was plumpy. And all the kids on Rothley were full of fish and chips because that's all they ate, bless her. So when she came to London eating beautiful foods at Dorothy's house, you know, and desserts and cream, this and that, and then suddenly it was... Yes. What's going on here, you know, something she'd never seen or had before. And she did say, you know, I've got to wear all these silly costumes and, and try and get into them and try and be a bit more with it for the TV, you know. In 1976, at the age of 12, Lena Zavaroni became the youngest performer to top the bill at the Royal Variety Performance. The amazing thing about Lena, she was never nervous. The Royal Command Performance. She had a very quick change in it. She came in and did a, a number as a chimney sweep. Um, and then she, there was a transformation into the sparkly dress, you know. And I could be standing on the side of the stage thinking, ah. Oh, Ah, uh, not Lena. She was, you know, the play on music or whatever. She's off. Oh, no nerves. Lena's parents still lived in Rothsey, and because of work, Lena only saw them occasionally. In London, she spent most of her time in adult company. It was thought she needed to be with children her own age. And so she was enrolled at the Italia Conti Stage School. Lena? Yes, Mr. Boat. Wrong. She came into the building, everyone recognised that it was Lena Zavaroni, this young girl who'd been singing and 
photographs in the newspaper, so everyone was excited to have her at the school. During rehearsal, she was so quiet and everyone was competitive and I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And Lena would sing her numbers and just mark through them um, before the show actually went on, everyone was nudging, she's not going to do it, she's not going to do it, she won't be able to do it, she won't be able to perform, she's not this big Lena type character. And of course the curtain went up and suddenly this young kid went on stage with a voice to die for. At the age of 14, Lena was now old enough to double the number of days she could work. And so, as well as her schooling, she did more TV guest appearances, performed a successful West End stage show, recorded more records, and starred in her own television show. It seemed as if there was no stopping her. Raindrops on roses with whiskers on kittens, bright copper kettles with warm woolen mittens, brown paper packages tied up with strings. Dorothy Solomon. When you first took Lena away to start this incredible career of hers in this unbelievable four years that she's had, you, you didn't really want to get involved in it, did you? N no, not with a nine-year-old child. What, you expected her to be a monster, did you? Yes, and also it's quite difficult, you know, to look after um, a child of that age. I mean, we have a, an early picture of her here. Now, at that stage, you could have pretty well got away with anything just because you were very young, couldn't yeah. you? Is it much more difficult now? Well, that I should think so, because I don't, you know, Dorothy... Well, she, as she says, she enjoys it so much, and she does work hard at it, and that's why I think she does it so well. Someday, maybe, if I stick it long enough, I'm not even struck my stone. But it was also around this time that concern grew about how thin Lena looked. At first, it was put down to her adolescence, but the truth was soon to be revealed. In the summer of 1979, when Lena was 16, she returned to the Isle of Butte to visit her parents. She had been working hard in a summer season in Bridlington and looked very thin. When she came home, I noticed she was very thin. I thought to myself, well, maybe it's a transaction between being a teenager and an adult that you know how you lose weight. Well, I mean, I never, I never thought in a million years she wasn't eating. I mean, I thought, she, uh, to me, uh, she was sitting down and she was eating. But what I never noticed was the amount she was eating. She wasn't eating that, you know. But, as I say, I never noticed that at the time. And uh, she ended up in the hospital. I go as far as thinking that she had something like cancer or something like that because she was so, so thin. I thought she was wasting away, you know. Anyway, the doctor, um, I had an interview with the doctor when I went up to see her and he said to me, um, he says, uh, well, your daughter, Mrs. Averoni, uh, has got a trouble eating, eating problem. It's called uh, anorexia nervosa. Anorexia nervosa is a psychiatric illness that mainly affects teenage girls and young women who are often high achievers. Although the sufferers starve themselves to prove they are in control of their body weight and shape, the illness is an outward sign of inner emotional or psychological problems. Eating or not eating is used to help block out painful feelings. Recent research suggests it may be partly hereditary. Sufferers may have a genetic predisposition towards stress and anxiety. 